Okay, we're going. To, we're going to go ahead and get started. <clears throat> I want to welcome you to the honors and awards ceremony for 2014, to acknowledge the accomplishments of many of your classmates, and to reward them in some cases. Beginning with turning this off. Every one of you has one, I'm sure. You can set it to stun. Mine is turned off because it tends to cause feedback on the microphone. This is an important part of the, the history of the pharmacy school. I was actually talking to Sherry Lambert a second ago, asking her, how many have we done? Because this is the, one of the first ceremonies that we created for the School of Pharmacy. Um, Follies was the second. So you're coming up on Follies, and for those of you that don't remember that, that's always a lot of fun because everybody tries to get their skits together right before the final exams and do them well, and they get incredibly good every year. Scholarship committee has been working diligently to name the recipients that we'll be recognizing today, and I'd like to acknowledge their work, Amber Westner, Christina Chang, and Sarah Parnum Hijouet. And we will be assisted in congratulations. Christina Chang will be doing the Ashburn side, and Amber will be helping me on this side. She also has a script, so in case I forget where I am, she's designated to slap me in the back of the head. The recipients of the scholarships and awards are those students who completed a scholarships and awards request form, and the level of financial aid was determined by Nancy Bragg. Dr. Arthur Harrelson and Jim Green will be presenting the awards in the Ashburn campus, and as I indicated, congratulations will be offered by Amber Westner and Dr. Christina Chang. I'd also like to acknowledge, as I read off the recipients, representatives. Yeah. Yes. 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 You guys here? Okay. Without the mic for a while. It's funny because. Um, Mary Ann Kirkpatrick one time came into my office and I was lecturing in the 501 class to the first class of students and she said, I've had a complaint from a student who has a cochlear implant, you need to dial back the volume the next time you lecture. And I said, I wasn't using a mic. <laughs> she said, dial it back anyway. <laughs> the first award is one that we don't give every year. We acknowledge the participants who work very diligently to participate in the patient counseling competition. And this year, for the second time in the history of the School of Pharmacy, we actually have a national recipient of the APHA AST <laughs> patient counseling competition. <laughs> it, is, it is very rare for a School of Pharmacy to win the award, almost impossible for it to win twice. Um, there are 130 schools in the competition, and it's done at the APHA meeting in the midst of all the other activities that are going on, and it's incredibly stressful for the people that do it. Um, the, the, re the, the recognition this year is going to be given by two representatives from APHA who took time away from their busy schedules to come to Ashburn, Ann Burns, a personal friend of mine, and Lynette Hamilton Plowden, and I'll turn it over to them to make their award. Thank you, Dean McKay. Can, every, can you hear me out in Winchester? Yeah. It's right. 60 miles, but we can still hear you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and, and I love going out there as well. It's gorgeous. I can't tell you how excited we are to be here, and I hope you all realize what an incredible honor this is for Shenandoah and Joanna to be the national award winner for the National Patient Counseling Competition. Um, this is a special year for this competition because it's the 30th anniversary. And that means that over the course of those 30 years, thousands and thousands of student pharmacists have shown that they understand how important it is for us to communicate and educate our patients effectively. Because we can be the best clinicians in the world, but if our patients don't understand how to take their medications, then essentially we've failed. And that's the essence of the patient counseling competition. Um, so this year, or I guess it was last year in the fall, thousands and thousands of, of student pharmacists participated at the local level at each of their schools and colleges of pharmacy. 
And then 127, which was one school short, 127 schools sent a representative to participate in the national patient counseling competition. And so it went from thousands to 127 to the top 10 to Joanna. So we're very, very happy for you. Um, I also would like to um, recognize CVS Caremark. CVS has been a strong supporter of the National Patient Counseling Competition. And I'm going to use the acronym NPCC because I know we have a lot of awards to get through. Um, but Amy Holland, who is also the Director of Pharmacy Recruitment at CVS Caremark, has been a big supporter of this program. And she sends her regards and unfortunately is not able to be here today. Um, another individual who's highly involved with this program is a gentleman by the name of Ken Leibowitz, who has been with the program and actually spearheaded its formation 30 years ago. And then our own Lynette Plowden, who is the primary contact, the guru, the queen of NPCC. And we're very excited that she can be here today to assist. Um, so without all of these individuals in support, this this important competition would not be possible. So at this time, I would like to ask APHA ASP Chapter Advisor, uh, Renee Thomas, and is Jamie Clucken here as well, co-advisor? Would also like to recognize Tara Jenkins um, from the Winchester campus, who served also as a co-advisor. And Dean McKay, we're here with you virtually because you would be right up here as well. <laughs> um, so what I'd like to do, first of all, is uh, the, there are several presentations. The first is to Shenandoah University. And what we have is a seven inch replica of the National Patient Counseling Competition trophy, which is very large. It stands about this big at APHA headquarters. And um, Dean McKay remembers this. We used to transport the, I think it's 1,500 pound trophy from school to school. But we, it was, we, we were the last ones to receive the parts. <laughs> yes, unfortunately the trophy came in min, many small pieces to Shenandoah University. So now it rests at APHA and we have a replica. So congratulations, um, you can keep this for forever basically to recognize this accomplishment. And then finally, I'd like to recognize the 2014 National Patient Counseling Competition winner, Joanna Lyon. Um, Joanna. <laughs> Besides the recognition in front of thousands of student pharmacists at our annual meeting, Joanna gets this very nice keepsake plaque. She gets a picture of the founding fathers of the American Pharmacists Association, and she gets a $1,000 check. <laughs> so, congratulations. So, on behalf of APHA and CVS Caremark, um, many, many congrats to Joanna and Shenandoah University. I'm sure she's just one example of the stellar uh, clinicians and future clinicians that we have in this program. So, thank you very much. Anne, could you have Renee come up for a second? Sure. Renee, can you come up for a second? <laughs> A little bit of background, and Renee will understand this. I was in my office minding my own business, which for a dean is a seldom occurring event. And I got a call, and she said, can you come down to my office? And I said, sure, what's it all about? And she said, you'll see when you get here. I came down, and there was a large wooden packing crate sitting in the middle of her office, and she said, pick up one end of that. And I picked it up, and she said, what does that sound like to you? And I said, trouble. Because <laughs> it was like you were dropping ice cubes in a glass. And the whole trophy had basically disintegrated. And that's why we were the last ones to officially receive <laughs> the official trophy, because they figured that from that point on, putting it back together with super glue was impossible. <laughs> yeah, and I had to deliver the bad news. That was not so fun. <laughs> but you also delivered two candidates that have done an outstanding job. Congratulations, Renee. And our thanks to APHA and for those individuals who came out from their meeting. 
we weren't sure we were going to be able to do it as a part of the honors and awards. And congratulations to Joanna. The next scholarship that we give is for Eugene V. White. Uh, Eugene V. White was a, a major player in the conversion of traditional pharmacies with soda fountains into the professional pharmacy. Um, he has a lot to do uh, almost directly with the curriculum that we have here and the instruction that you receive as professionals. Um, when I was um, coming to Winchester, I was still living in Arkansas, and I got a phone call and it said, hi, you probably don't know me, but I'm Gene White. And I said, no, you, you were required reading in graduate school. And he was so acknowledged by his peers at that time that it's hard to re remember what it was like when he started and when Laura started with him. They were recipients of a lot of vitriolic condemnation by their peers and by physicians because it was viewed largely as a violation of the professional code of pharmacist and by physicians as an intrusion into their space to tell patients how to take their medication safely. Gene and Laura persevered. They were able to convince the profession and ultimately the world of healthcare that there was a larger role for pharmacists to play in the delivery of patient care. And to a great extent, you're the re direct recipients of that perseverance, that insight, and that intellect. Uh, we lost Gene a few years ago, much to my regret, because he was a constant partner in the development of the school and the curriculum. He would come by here frequently. And we have his original pharmacy located on this floor at the end of this hall, set up almost exactly as it was the day that he turned the key and closed the door in 1995, with the exception of three feet. We couldn't quite get it all in. But we do have it, and we have a lot of the original artifacts and records that Gene diligently kept. We even have his biology notes. And if you want to see how detailed he is, this was in the day before students were given detailed books, and he kept his own notes in very professional penmanship with sketches that to me took an enormous amount of time. So I'd like to recognize Gene's widow. Would you like to stand, Laura? And Alexis Hot. And is one of you going to come forward to congratulate the recipients? Or one of you want to come forward to congratulate the recipients? The Eugene V. White Endowed Scholarship goes to a deserving student in good academic standing. The endowment this year totals $3,746, and each of the following students will receive one-third of that amount. The three recipients of the Eugene V. White Endowed Scholarship this year are Gina Ayers, Fang Fang Wu, and Andrew Wilt Allison. Please come forward. Congratulations. Congratulations. Now you see how these candidates did it? They walked by and shook hands. Last year we had to trip a couple of them. <laughs> because they took off across the stage and everybody was just standing here like, okay, fine. We'll form a line later. <laughs> the next, next scholarship is a CVS scholarship. It goes to a student, a deserving student in good academic standing. It's a scholarship for $1,000, and presenting and representing CVS is Eileen Munch. The recipients of the scholarship this year are Allison Hunt, Nikki Knobel, Samrat Sarecki, and Josh Bittner. Congratulations. Thank you, Eileen. The next scholarship is the Benjamin G. Hare Memorial Scholarship. A little bit of background on this scholarship I think is in order, and if you've been following the news, you've probably seen the individual who's going to represent this scholarship to the student body. 
Uh, ben Hare was an outstanding athlete and student who was enrolled in his first year of pharmacy school. Um, over Christmas break, he went home. Um, his car inexplicably split, slid into a tree and he was killed instantly. I remember seeing Ben as he went out the door the last day after finals. And he was heading off to his car and I said, I guess you're gonna take a carload of laundry home to your parents. And he said, no, I wouldn't do that to my parents. That's the kind of individual that Ben was. He would have graduated last year. The Benjamin G. Hare Scholarship goes to a deserving first year professional student athlete who has a grade point average of 3.0 or greater. The scholarship consists of a check of $1,000 and representing the Ben G. Hare Memorial Scholarship is his father, Gordon Hare. Gordon is a longtime pharmacy uh, representative, pharmacist. Um, you've seen him on the news le recently about the GM recall. Um, ben apparently was one of the individuals that was a victim of that failed auto part that caused his car to crane out of control. The recipient this year is Nikki Person. She's a member of the Shenandoah University soccer team. The next recipient, for those of you that have been around here a while, is the Ron Herbaugh Scholarship. Ron Herbaugh was a security guard, but a lot more than that. Um, he had a lot to do with many of the plannings that you have around here. Um, he assisted me with restoring the, um, the apothecary to its current uh, appearance. And it was interesting because Ron and I took a power hose down on this patio and cleaned decades of Coke syrup off of those fixtures before we brought them into the building. We were both covered up in slime and, and black coke spray by the time we finished the job. The other thing that was interesting about Ron is that we were always trying to figure out how to do things because obviously fixtures that are 100 years old don't come with an a manual. And so when we were looking at the fixtures, we noticed that there were stains all along the marble and we couldn't figure out how to get the stains out. We figured out what they were caused by because if you sit on one of those stools in the apothecary and spin around, your knees hit the counter at that level. And so it was basically a lot of adolescent knees that had hit that counter over the decades since those fixtures were first installed. But getting it out was a real trick. We tried everything. We even tried sanding it. And then one day I had a book called How to Clean Nearly Anything. And I gave it to Ron and I said, look in here and see if it's got any ideas. And he came back and he said, I don't believe it. It said, all you do is you take distilled water and you add baking soda to it and you put it on the marble and it takes the color out, takes the stains out. I said, no, nah, that's too simple. He said, well, we got nothing to lose. And so he made a POTUS out of baking soda and water. He stuck it with duct tape to the marble. The next day we came in, the POTUS was black and the marble was white. That's the kind of individual Ron was. He was more than a security guard. He participated in the very life of the students. There are some film clips of him in a very hilarious follies, if you ever want to see it, that tells you what a genuine individual Ron Herbal was. Unfortunately, we lost him a few years ago. We do have his memory, and we have a scholarship for a deserving student of $250. The recipient of the Ron Herbal Scholarship this year is Kylie Pooler. The next scholarship is a Kmart Endowed Scholarship. It goes to a student who has a strong interest in retail pharmacy. Each scholarship this year is valued at $1,231. And the two recipients of the Kmart Endowed Scholarship this year are Kevin Lonabaugh and Lily Newen. The next scholarship is the Walgreens Excellence Scholarship. 
It goes to a deserving student who wishes to pursue a career in retail community pharmacy and is in good academic standing. The award this year consists of a scholarship of $1,000. Representing Walgreens will be Alexandria Broadus. The individual's recipient's name will be added to a plaque that is in the lobby of the pharmacy school. The recipients of the Walgreens Excellence Scholarship this year are Stacy Giles and Joanna Lyon in Ashburn. The next scholarship is also from Walgreens. It's a diversity scholarship. It goes to a deserving student who has promoted pharmacy practice to minority students. There are, there are four awards. The first award is for $2,000, and the other three are for $1,000 apiece. I'm going to try my best with this name. It's Dion Tan Pacharan Achevin. <laughs> is that close enough to be considered true? Huh? That's easier. <laughs> Take note of that. <laughs> there we go. I can handle it. Is Dion here? Got it. Is Dion there? For two thousand dollars, I changed my name too. <laughs> Congratulations! Thank you. Thank you. We'll we'll do a virtual handshake from this end. <laughs> the next three awards are to William Aquino, Linda Nguyen, and Bernice Dingo. The next scholarship is a mutual wholesale drug scholarship. It goes to a student who's demonstrated academic achievement and has an interest in independent pharmacy practice. The award consists of a check for $1,000, which will be distributed in midsummer. The recipient of the mutual wholesale drug scholarship is Sarah Medved. The next scholarship is the Rite Aid Endowed Scholarship. It goes to a deserving P1 student who has an interest in retail pharmacy. Representing Rite Aid will be Donna Hazel, and I'd also like to recognize Jennifer Saunders, who is in the middle of flashbacks right now. She's a graduate of our program, and she said she walked in here and she said, oh, this brings back memories. So it hasn't changed a whole lot. But I'd like to thank Donna. She's been here many times. The recipient of the award this year is Sarah Godfrey. The next scholarship is the Rite Aid Excellence Scholarship. It goes also to a student who's interested in retail pharmacy. Presenting the check is Donna Hazel for $1,000, and it's to Dania Segura.
The next award is the Pharmacist Mutual Company Scholarship. It goes to a deserving student who has demonstrated outstanding leadership and academic achievement at the School of Pharmacy. The award consists of a check for $500 and the recipient of the Pharmacist Mutual Company's Scholarship is Amanda Shiflett. The next award is the Stouffer Scholarship. It goes to talented and deserving students. The total will be split among the five students, the six students who are recipients of $5,626. The recipients are in Ashburn, Cassandra Ramos, Olaide Anabuse, Alicia Harnish in Ashburn, Jean Manuel Tayag in Winchester, Jocelyn Dow, and Ashley Hill. The next award is the Marianne Kirkpatrick Service Scholarship. Marianne Kirkpatrick was the Associate Dean for Student Affairs for a number of years. Um, she retired and is continuing her involvement in pharmacy as being one of the district uh, presidents for, a, for VPHA. It goes to a deserving service focused student. The award consists of a check for $500 and the recipient of the Marianne Kirkpatrick Service Scholarship this year is Kaylin Chandler. Each year, the schools of pharmacy enter into an OTC competition that is played out at the APHA annual meeting. The students who, present, who represented the school this year in the VPHA OTC competition um, will, be stand, will stand and be recognized. The individuals are Kirby Hatter. <laughs> Ashley Hill. Amanda Shiflett. and Mary Lee Pittman. And while everybody is at the beach playing in the surf, they'll be practicing, right? <laughs> Congratulations, guys. The next awards are the Phi Delta Chi Awards. The Phi Delta Chi Scholarship Award will be presented by Kylie Abelis. Abelis. <laughs> Make a note. Okay. <laughs> Do you have a business card? Do you have a business card? I'll get you one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Compose yourself. Get a grip. Uh, do I need a microphone? Or you just get a grip. No, you, you get a grip. Each year, the Phi Delta Chi Pharmaceutical Fraternity likes to award one student who embodies our visions with the annual PDC scholarship. The slogan for Phi Delta Chi is leaders in pharmacy. And that is a core concept that we look at within people. Leadership among, with unity among peers and giving back to community through volunteer hours shows how we individually can make impacts in the regions in which we live. This year, there were many great candidates which made it very hard for us to choose only one winner. The recipient of this year's scholarship showed our values in many ways. They hold many officer positions as well as shifting to different positions through the years to own their skills and become involved in many events. They have excelled academically both inside and out of the classroom. Through their volunteer work, they have reached out into the community to not only help in the health professions way, but in a, in a humanitarian way. With all of the events and activities that this person has helped organize, lead, and participate in, one thing they felt that it took away was the importance of listening, which, in, which is an undervalued aspect seen in great leaders. All of these aspects help to develop humble leaders, which this person embodies and will continue to grow and thrive during their career. 
I am proud to announce that the recipient of the 2014 Phi Delta Chi Scholarship is Jason Guy. Don't, don't go there. <laughs> it's my fault, not his, man. <laughs> it's a struggle every year, man. <laughs> Fight El Takai Brother of the Year Award will be given by Ron Lampkin. <laughs> Did I get the Ron part right? <laughs> All right, the brothers of Phi Delta Chi Pharmaceutical Fraternity would like to honor an individual that has embraced the motto of our fraternity, that each needs the help of the other. This individual has distinguished himself as a leader, is constantly working to improve the workings of both our fraternity and the university, provides advice, guidance to their peers and underclassmen, and always embraces others in a kind and professional manner. This year, the PDC Brother of the Year for the 2013-2014 academic year has been awarded to Ms. Kirby Hatter. Congratulations. Thank you. The Kappa Psi 2013 Brother of the Year Award will be presented by Dr. Ala Marks. I am presenting in lieu of Dr. Rebecca Falter, who is the faculty advisor or grand um, council um, deputy for Kappa Psi. I have three awards actually, so this is going to take a little time. <laughs> um, the first award is for scholarship honor certificates. Um, this originated in 1958, and it recognizes brothers with outstanding scholastic achievement. Um, it's given annually to brothers who have maintained at least a 3.0 GPA, um, and it's being given to P3s this year, and then P4s will get it at the hooding ceremony. So I will go ahead and announce the... Yeah, we'll get that. I'll do Winchester first, and then I'll do Ashburn. First one is Atina Alamarvdash. I know that she cannot, could not attend today. Ia Gendi. <laughs> Tatiana Koslova. <laughs> Evan Lonebaugh. <laughs> Lily Wynn. <laughs> Chenadu Nazali. <laughs> Amy Truong. <laughs> Fang Fang Wu. In Ashburn, it's Cassandra Ramos and Christina Yi. Christina, your uh, certificate is being delivered this afternoon. They're taking pictures over there. The second award is the Kappa Psi Brother of the Year Award. Uh, this person's peers have stated that this person took a, the time to learn almost everything about Kappa Psi on a local and national level, has shown to be very passionate about the fraternity, 
and above all exudes enthusiasm for the fraternity and re represents us in a way that makes us proud to be a brother. These are a few of the reasons why T.J. Chapman is being recognized as Brother of the Year. Okay, we'll make sure to get it to him. And lastly, the third award is the Grand Council Deputy Award, which is basically the Faculty Advisor Award. This person has led the fraternity with dedication, enthusiasm, and a sincere sense of responsibility to make sure that everything was accomplished for the year. This person represented our chapter on a national level by serving as the delegate for our national meeting, has played an integral role in helping our chapter to grow throughout the year. These are a few of the reasons why Will Kennard is being recognized as the recipient for the GCD award. Thank you. The Rokai Awards will be presented this year by David Newton and Eileen Langstrit. Okay. Rokai is pleased to recognize the P1s who achieved 4.0 GPAs during their first semester of pharmacy school. In Ashburn, it's Mimosa Lim. And here, Michelle Nugent and Kylie Pooler. And that was a stethoscope, correct? <laughs> the APHA ASP awards are going to be presented this year by Kevin Lonnebaum. <clears throat> the... <laughs> The Shenandoah chapter of APHA ASP has had a very successful year, stemming from events like the Capitol Hill Health Fair in the fall to a health fair at Freedom Plaza in DC. Through it all, we've selected one member of the year who has shown dedication to our organization and has really furthered our profession and shown himself to be um, unifying in terms of um, providing access to student members on both Ashburn and Winchester campuses. He's been an inspirational leader and has stepped up in an executive board role this year. He's inspirational as well and has shown our student members what it means to establish a um, national awareness for our organization and our university. With that being said, I'd like to award Matthew Boyd as the APHA ASP <laughs> Member of the Year. The next award is the, is the Phi Lambda Sigma Award. It'll be presented this year by Al Ashley Hill and Allison Goodecker. And the uh, PS PLS Member of the Year, Dr. Kelly Masters. So as the email you guys know, got, yes, we can't hear we you. We can't Ashburn. hear you. Sorry, the mic is out. Oh, the mic went out. Ashburn can't hear.
Right. We have no sound in Ashburn. Is any can anyone hear? Can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Thank you. <laughs> so to start over, um, Lambda Sigma recognizes. Can you? Thank you. So if I Lambda Sigma res recognizes students that demonstrate leadership every year, there are some in Ashburn. Jenny Chang, are you there with them? Yes, I'm here. Okay. So I'm gonna we're gonna go off and say all the names. You guys come up, shake hands, and get your award, and then we'll applause for everybody at the end. So Jeffrey Spaulding. <laughs> Eileen Langstrad. Will Kennard. Alyssa Killian. Ashburn, can you still hear me? Yes. Yes. Uh, Kelly yes. Goble, not global, sorry. And Brittany Vogel. And Jerry Van. Every year, um, PLS nominates a chapter member of the year award, and I would just like to say, as the advisor of PLS, um, they have been a wonderful group to work with this year. Obviously, being the advisor of a leadership organization makes my job very easy, because they are all leaders. Um, so they do a great job. And I'd like to acknowledge all the hard work Ashley Hill has done this year um, with pr producing some new fundraisers, the Pad for Pad Folios <laughs> um, was a new um, fundraiser and she was very successful for, with that. So our chapter member of the year award nominated by the um, fraternity goes to Allison Godecker. Congratulations. Thanks, Kelly. You're welcome. The next award is the National Community Pharmacists Association Award being presented this year by Dr. Wallace Marsh and Tasania Kozlov. So um, each year NCPA chapter chooses the member who has shown uh, dedication to the chapter, who has shown tremendous work ethic. Um, the member that will get this award this year um, has been active in the chapter since day one. He has joined the chapter his P1 year and has held a lot of different office pos officer positions. He has worked tremendously with other chapter members in organizing different um, events to serve the community. And I would like to um, award Jason Nguyen. Thank you for all of your hard work. <laughs> the, the next recognition is to CPFI, Christian Pharmacist Fellowship International. This will be presented by Dr. Marsh, Dr. Volger, Dr. Johnson, Hannah Connor, and in Ashburn, Dr. Renee Thomas. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, we're very proud of CPFI, the Christian Pharmacist Fellowship International, for all of their work this year. Uh, it's been a wonderful group. Uh, they've done a lot of good lot things of good. out in the community. Um, they've, um, they've done Bible studies here, book studies. They've also done community events like Jubilee Kitchen. Uh, and they just recently did a Pete's Health Fair um, at the Boys and Girls Club. And so they're, they're very, very involved, and we're just so proud of them. Um, the, uh, the first award that we'd like to give out is for the CPFI Member of the Year Award. Um, the CPFI Member of the Year is voted on by the membership as someone that has gone above and beyond the call for CPFI 
and for spreading the good news of Christ. This year's winner has embodied what it means to be a servant. Uh, she has kept us all very organized um, and on task this year. Uh, she's really not one that, that needs the limelight, limelight or actually wants the limelight, uh, but she's a true leader and a servant leader. Uh, she includes others in on, on all that we do. Uh, the recipient for this year's uh, Member of the Year Award is our CPFI President, Hannah Connor. Hannah uh, got a certificate and hold up the other. Um, she also, as a recognition, gets this is the, the prayer of a pharmacist. I don't know if, if y'all have seen this before, but it's um, the prayer of a pharmacist and actually has the pharmacist stamp on there as well. So, congratulations, Hannah. Uh, we also have some special recognitions as well to give out. Um, uh, we'd like to um, give a certificate of appreciation. I don't know what's going on here, but I've got an echo. Uh, to a to a P4 student, and this is a little bit unusual for the award ceremony, uh, but uh, most P4s, once they get out in the rotations, are just so busy, uh, and they are not able to really come and attend a lot of activities with the organizations. Uh, but this student really went above the uh, above and beyond the call this year. She's been present at many of the Bible studies and community events. And the other thing that she's really done a, a wonderful job of is she served as a role model and a mentor for a lot of the underclass students. So we'd like to give the P4 Recognition Award to Dr. To Be Lauren Chambers. I had to trick Lauren into getting here, so I had to tell a little, a little fib. Uh, I told her that she was going to be a part of the presentation. She was going to make the presentation. So, anyway, she, we knew she would come anyway. So, uh, it's rather ironic, CPFI. Yeah, I know. I, <laughs> Al, Alan would pick up on that. So, anyway, um, we also have some. Um, special recognitions for Ashburn. Uh, as a satellite campus, unfortunately, uh, satellite campuses sometimes uh, get left out on some things. And so uh, CPFI through the years, we've, we've not had as, uh, as good of a presence up there as what we've wanted. Uh, but we have a couple of individuals this year that have really stepped up and have established a wonderful presence for CPFI up there. Um, and uh, um, I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Renee Thomas, who has been very instrumental in, in helping the students up there and working with them. So, Dr. Thomas. Thank you, and I don't deserve any of the credit. So I'd like to call up Joanna Lyon. Um, Natalia, I don't see. Natalia Uzo will be the other person, but Joanna, come on up, please. We just, We just want to say thank you because I know it's taken a lot of work, a lot of drive, a lot of commitment to get things started over here and that has really been as a result of your effort. So thank you for all you've done and for all your service. And we want to also recognize Dr. Marsh this year. He is stepping down from being our co-advisor and we just wanted to say thank you for everything. And we have a assigned Matt with a picture of us to show our gratitude. Um, we also wanted to recognize Dr. Johnson as an end of the year gift. We've donated $60 in his name to the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society and we also um, have nominated him for a National CPFI Advisor of the Year Award. And we also wanted to recognize Dr. Volger, and we're going to support her coffee habit. <laughs> so thank you for everything. Thank you. <laughs> the next presentation will be Relay for Life. 
Kaylin Chandler. Yell at her. This year, Dr. Volger stepped up to be the Relay for Life um, advisor for us, and I was the team captain. We're RX for Hope. Um, the theme this year was Disney themed, so we were the Toy Story team, and we kicked cancer to infinity and beyond to the tune of $7,829.54. So thank you to everybody that was on our team that helped us raise that money. And our goal was 5000 so thank you again. Um, I do have a couple of awards for two students who raised the top amount for our team and also two of the staff members who raised the most. Our first one is in Ashburn. I'm sure she's not there. Both of our students are P4 students who raised the most, and they're on rotation, so good for them. Um, but in Ashburn, it is Kim Vo, so I'm not sure that she's there, but we'll get her award over to her. And then um, we also have an award for Lauren Chambers for raising the second amount. Okay, and for our staff members, um, we have Miss Sherry Lambert. And we also have Kelly Clovis. I'm not sure if she's here. We'll get her award to her, but thank you for everybody's support. Thank you. The next appreciation certificates go to those individuals who have contributed their time to bringing in the next class of pharmacy students. That's a very important task. We always have prided ourselves on admitting people that we would like to call colleagues and friends, and I think it's in, in a very noble activity that these individuals are involved in. I'd like to call on Stephanie Clark in Winchester and Debbie Lynn in Ashburn to recognize the contributions of the individuals that have done the admissions interviews. Hello, I just want to thank everybody first just for helping me in my first year um, and not running for me when I come down the halls looking for interviewers. So thank you all. <laughs> um, I'll apologize for my voice now. Allergies are not good. Um, there's a lot of you, so I just ask you to stand um, and be recognized and then I'll put all your certificates in your boxes later. Is that okay? Sure. All right. First is Y Sang, Will Kennard, Ryan Jones, Sean Kohas. Sydney Cranford, Tatiana Wright, Wynn Trent Ta, Allison Goker, Amanda Shiflett, Akizi Harris, Abneet Sidhu, Catherine Kazoo, Courtney Peck, Daniel Masif, Daniel, sorry, Eileen Longstrad, Gina Ayers, Wang Ha, Jason Wynn, Jennifer Borden, Jerry Van, Kate Headley, Jet Prone, Katie Fromm, Kay Chandler, Kelly Tiong, Kevin Lanabaugh, Sorry, I hit you. <laughs> Lily Wynn, Melissa Morris, Michael Milanoff, Nikki Noble, Natumbo Jokenberg, Rachel Samard, Robbie Kareem, Brian Jones, I already say him. Oh, I'm all done. There you go. Thank you all. <laughs> Um, do you want to get Ashburn next? Okay, Debbie, you want to do Ashburn now? Yeah, we're ready. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Alati Ibosi, sorry, Vito, 
We'll just stick there with that. Britta Balls, <laughs> Matthew Boyd, Corey Bratner, Elmira Darvish, Dion Foon, I'm not silly, <laughs> Julie Garcia, Marilyn Hill, Lynn Huang, Gina DeRose, MJ Kang, Bridget Larson, Pauline Lay, Ali Lopez, Mata Mahomedi, Andrea Mantiful, Mark Morgan, Johnny Nguyen, Linda Nguyen, Abby Omalayo, Tina Fo, Casey Ramos, <laughs> Jason Rasmussen, Hannah Rinker, Nicole Robertson, Naman Shah, Serene Sultana, Kim Vo, Brittany Vogel, and Janet Zell. Thanks, guys. I just want to thank you for, for uh, all your help with admissions this year. I think we're, especially we have scholarships and awards and we see what a wonderful job so many of our students are doing. It's all possible because of our student interviewers helping us with that process. And just as a, as a final note, if you were still sitting down when Ms. Clark was done with her uh, calling out the names, you may be getting an email to come see me. My name wasn't on the list. <laughs> They actually took me off the list a long time ago when I made two students in a row cry. <laughs> Don't understand it. <laughs> Dr. Shelton, come on down. This is the Golden Apple Award. It's presented by the Organizational Leadership Council members, and Dr. Shelton will lead the parade. Um, so, this year, we kind of made a little executive decision that we were going to change a little bit and we were going to actually produce three Golden Apple Awards, one for each of the first three professional years of the program. So we'll be awarding three different awards at this time. The other thing I'd like to say is as Associate Dean for Academic Affairs, it looks like we're running up on time, so I just want to give everyone permission to be a little late for your class, because <laughs> this is important. Um, so, lab instructors and course coordinators, please, please accept a little bit of a late uh, student arrival today. Um, would the pro first professional year representatives come up? We have Hannah, Nikki, Jeff, and Will, and Ashburn. I promise you that next year we're going to figure out a way to actually involve individuals from your class to be able to do this type of presentation. So. Um, we, you're here with us in spirit, and you also participated in, in nominating and electing these individuals. So um, I'm going to actually, let's see, hold this for a second. This teacher keeps students engaged and gives encouragement and helpful advice. This teacher takes the most complicated things and makes them incredibly simple to understand. This teacher is seemingly always available when you need to talk or ask for help with learning the material. And the P1 Teacher of the Year goes to Dr. Craig Richard. Okay, so that brings us to the second professional year. Would the representatives from the P2 class come forward? Adam, Amanda, Sarah, and Tatiana. This teacher exhibits a great level of passion and excitement for their job and the subject matter they teach. 
This teacher uses real world examples and does an excellent job at providing an interactive, enjoyable teaching style that engages yet challenges the class. This teacher is amazing and shows their care about our success, sending personalized, encouraging, congratulatory emails, and going out of their way to learn each student's name. This teacher goes above and beyond providing support in and out of class to help make sure a complex topic, lub dub, lub dub, lub dub, <laughs> is understandable. The P2 Teacher of the Year is Dr. Marsha Brackbill. Dr. Brackbill, could you come forward with All right. Um, we ha we have our third professional person that's not in the room, but they're on their way in transit. So I'm trying to figure out if we can actually deliver and wait. You got one more? Awesome. That works out good. <laughs> Just act dumb. <laughs> we have one more recognition to give out. It's for Cap Epsilon, and I'd like to invite Tiffany Francisco to come forward. The first award is our Pedal Points Award, and it's awarded to the member who has participated the most over the last year. Um, through their dedication, we would like to present this award to Emily Hesse. On behalf of our president, Bess Gazoo, who couldn't be here today, um, we would like to award this year's President's Award to Chelsea Crone. All right. Um, hopefully the timing on this will work out perfect, but um, could the representatives from the third professional year come forward? I have Kay, Eileen, Ashley, and Kevin. Just drag it out a little bit. Sure. So. Okay. This teacher is an incredible professor, listens to students' needs, is very encouraging, <laughs> <laughs> and keeps topics interesting. This teacher is amazing and validates my reason for choosing a small private school for my education. This teacher spends countless hours answering emails, setting up review sessions, and listening to student concerns. This teacher is a wonderful pharmacist, a great person, and an even better professor, and will be sorely missed by all of Bernard J. Dunn. The P3 Teacher of the Year is Dr. Mitzi Leiser.
parts. Mitzi, for those of you that don't know, after being with us a number of years, too numerous to count, is, le <laughs> is leaving for Iowa. And when she announced that she was taking a position in Iowa, I said, do you know what the winters are like in Iowa? She said, they can't be any worse than here. You want to say a few words? A box of uh, tissues here? No. I can no. <laughs> Thank you all so much. Um, this was unexpected. I picked up Brett. Brett has a... That's one of the reasons I'm going to like Iowa. It's back there. So I picked up Brett this morning. One of, <laughs> one of the reasons. So I picked him up. So we were actually going, how fast did we go? 60, no, 78 on well, 66. So, but only, only for you guys would I risk life and limb to get here. But um, thank you so very much. And I don't want to cry, so I'm just going to stop. <laughs> When, when Mitzi came in my office to break the news to me, um, I started telling her a story about a student who she had saved. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> and who is now one of my, our most valued preceptors. But if it hadn't been for Mitzi's involvement, she probably wouldn't have graduated. Um, and it was not for lack of intelligence. It was lack of emotional support. And that's the kind of person she is. Thank you. Guys, we're running over. There is cake and refreshments out front. Please be sure and thank your sponsors and have a nice semester and see you back in the fall if you're coming back.